Hello everybody. Today's video is about the skilled independent 189 visa and we have heard from a credible source that there's going to be an invitation round very soon, like before Christmas. I don't even remember the last time we had an invitation round for the 189. It was probably earlier this year in the last financial year. Maybe it was like February or March, but it was a small round. So from my memory, anything after the December 2022 round, which was a very big round, anything after that was actually quite small and it was mainly healthcare workers and teachers. So he is hoping that this coming invitation round will be a big one and will include lots of different occupations. So since that is coming up, I wanted to give everybody a summary of the skilled 189 visa and a couple of things to look out for so that you don't have any issues if you were to receive an invitation. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tracy Chen and I'm an immigration lawyer based in Australia. If you want to get in contact with myself or one of our fantastic lawyers or agents, our contact details are below. You can submit a query on our website. So the Skilled Independent 189 visa is a points-based visa and it's invitation only. Now, as the basic minimum to be even able to submit an expression of interest to be invited for this visa, you must be under the age of 45, you must score at least competent English, and you must be able to score at least 65 points on the points test. Now also for the skilled 189 visa, you need to have an occupation on the medium to long-term occupation list. So if you have a skills assessment in an occupation such as marketing specialist, unfortunately you can't apply for the 189 because it's not on the medium to long-term occupation list. It's on the short-term occupation list. Now with the 189, as soon as you do lodge the expression of interest, and if that's what they invite you at, the expression of interest is actually lot. So you can't change any information after you get the invitation. And what has happened previously is some people will lodge these EOIs, they would forget about it, not update any of the information. And some of the information is incorrect and they ended up receiving more points. And if you can't substantiate those points and claim that, then you can't really proceed with the invitation as you'll likely get a visa refusal. So I'll give you an example. We had a lovely gentleman come to us for a consultation last year and he got an invitation for the 189. Now he had lodged this a while ago and he kind of just forgot about it. At the time he was working in his nominated occupation for at least eight months, but he forgot to update it. And after 10 months, he actually stopped working there and he was no longer working in his nominated occupation. So he didn't update his EOI. So the EOI kept calculating the points and gave him an extra five points for Australian work experience as it ticked over the 12 months. He got the invitation, he came to us and really wanted to lodge it. But unfortunately we couldn't lodge it because you can't substantiate the points that you claim. So make sure you check all of your EOIs and make sure they're correct. Make sure you also have an up-to-date skills assessment and English test. Now for skills assessments, the expiry date does vary. But for example, Australian Computer Society expires after two years. The accounting skills assessments expire after three years. VetAssess expires after three years. And AMAC, the one for nurses, that one expires after two years. So you'll just need to check with your skills assessing authority and make sure that it hasn't expired already. For English tests, they are valid for three years from the date of the test. I know the test says two years, but for purposes of immigration, it is valid for three years. Make sure your location is correct as well. Now, it shouldn't make an impact on your 189, but you just don't want to get that wrong in case the department decides to make an issue of it. So a lot of people are offshore, they lodge at EOIs and they come to Australia on a student visa and start studying. Forget about their 189 EOI and the location is incorrect. Again, it shouldn't affect, but it's just not something you want to have wrong when you are submitting your visa application. I don't know, the department may have an issue with it in the future, they haven't in the past, but you just got to be careful of these things. Now, EOIs do expire after two years of lodgement. So again, a lot of people submit these and forget about them, but do go and check if yours is actually still valid. A lot of the times we will forget, you won't be able to log in if it's already expired. So then you'll need to lodge a new EOI. I do recommend if you do get an invitation to get this checked by a lawyer or an agent. I've done many consultations where people got an invitation, then they got a refusal because they overclaimed points or there was some sort of incorrect information or they couldn't verify their employment evidence. I did one the other day where an applicant lodged a 189. They didn't have a valid skills assessment at the time of lodgement. It had actually expired. They went ahead and lodged, had a whole family. So 
So the visa application cost was like over $10,000. It got refused. And unfortunately, there's no way to appeal it. And it wouldn't win that appeal anyway. But there was no way to appeal it because there were offshore applicants. So not worth it. Definitely get some assistance in this. And I would even recommend getting assistance from the get-go. So I've seen a lot of people try and overclaim work experience and then they can't proceed with the invitation, which is very sad. Anyways, I hope that video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.